On today's show, we break down that wild game, hit the news and notes, and of course, we finish the fantasy forecast. And you are not going to want to miss the end of this show with our DraftKings segment. We set our lineups, and someone <laughs> takes a punishment. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and leave us a comment. Enjoy. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with HelloFresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Hey, Foot Clan, how many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars just because you forget to cancel? Well, you can fight back against all that nonsense with Truebill, the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, you don't want, or you simply forgot about it. That's what happened with me. I, I got the Truebill app. I, I went through the process, and then I was like, Oh, my oh, yeah. ki my kids signed up for this piano app that's five bucks a month. I have not noticed this going on, and you could cancel it on average. People save up to seven hundred and twenty dollars a year with Truebill. You can cancel it. They'll cancel for you. Yes. Yeah. Inside it's, the app. It's great. You link your accounts with Truebill and they cancel the unwanted subscriptions in one tap. Truebill has over two million users that have helped save them over one hundred million dollars. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash footballers. Go right now. Truebill.com slash footballers. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash footballers. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo! The Fantasy Footballers, Friday, December 17th. The fantasy playoffs have begun. Still not sure if Kelsey's going to get over 70. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mean, he was, he uh, like, was, it was it. Now, when we did the buy sell for 70, it was on one play, right? It was like, will he have a play that is 70 yards? Which yeah. he didn't. No, he I didn't. Know. It, it was, was just short. Yeah, it was just short. He, it should have been. One yard longer for a third <laughs> touchdown. It was still nice. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. And, um, no, he was closer to tripling that number than he was hitting that number. I mean, he was 190 yards, 10 receptions, two touchdowns. The, you know, I made like a wise crack. That's what they call him, right? Yeah. On Twitter, a wise yeah. crack. Uh, just saying you should probably cover Kelsey. But the truth is, this, the Chiefs did what they should have done. Derwin James went down re-aggravated the hamstring and from that moment forward Travis Kelsey was allowed to like he's entered the lumbering phase of his tight end career he is now at the Gronkian open field level and it was kind of mesmerizing to yes. see no one around <laughs> like I don't think he expected to score that touchdown at all it was like I caught the ball I'm gonna turn around and get tackled and then he just Found a way through. Where is everybody? Just, so I was so just fast enough, just shifty enough. <laughs> it was just enough. I feel, you know, the the Chargers were in control of a lot of that game, and I don't know. You know, I saw another tweet that said, you know, this is a great a great game for team take the points. Yep. Because there were a lot of fourth downs, right? Like, yes. It's exciting for fantasy that every fourth down, it, it, the Chargers go for it. I mean, they just do. And a lot of the time, the law of averages and analytics will say that pays off. And, you know, you have multiple opportunities inside the five where mm -hmm. you go for it on fourth down. Tip passes. I mean, both teams failed around the goal line. So it was a very exciting game. It was awesome. It was 25 seconds left in the game until the first punt. <laughs> That's awesome. There was a point in the game where you two gentlemen told me on our Slack channel that, you know, because I was complaining about, Two goal line opportunities for Justin Herbert that you know Jared Cook dropped the pass. Yes, he you did. You had the very devastating new you know the injury to Donald Parham on a touchdown pass. Parham, come on, man. Parham. Parham. Sorry, that's right. He did correct us. Yeah. Um, 
But then you're like, at least you don't have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback. Right, because you At you that were, point, he had six points, an interception. It was like three minutes left to go in the game, and Patrick Mahomes sitting there with six fantasy points. Not and, that. It, that's no, not it, accurate. That's that is I'm not even that, that is actually I believe 100% accurate. No, he we're, scored 39 fantasy points. He didn't he didn't score 29 points on the final two drives of the game. We're we're playing against him and I know it was deep into the fourth when he had very few because of the interceptions he threw. He had negative points, but man, the overtime in that last drive, Travis Kelsey uh, it was uh yeah, Mike and I's team is playing against Mahomes, but we came out all right. We had Kelsey. Yep. Justin Jackson, 13 carries, 86 yards on the ground. Austin Eckler, 12 for 59, had the touchdown after the turnover, the incredible interception. And then Josh Kelly had seven carries as well. You know, Eckler was limited, clearly. Yes. And yet still was effective. It, so the Eckler, it was a little bit of everything. The Eckler part is so crazy because his line was he finished with 16 opportunities, 12 carries for 59 yards. That's sensational. He did get a rushing touchdown, had some receptions, and he was only out there for 34% of the snaps. But this line of, of this week was almost identical to what he put up last week and not that far off from two weeks ago, Like, even though he was never on the field. And ju meanwhile, Justin Jackson, the the backup for Austin Eckler, had himself a game where he, he, would, he carried the ball 13 times. 13 times? And Eckler still got his regular work. Yeah, he, he was. He looked. Uh, Jackson looked good. No, Chris Jones, obviously a big impact. There were two unmitigated busts in this game. the The first one by far is Clyde edwards alaire Yeah, he was. That's all you see from you know. You start your playoffs. The matchups look looks good on paper, and they decide to give him nine total carries. They don't give him the ball inside the ten at all. Yeah, they Daryl Williams got a couple carries inside the five and got stuffed. And then all th I, I, Mike Williams was a bust. I mean, Mike oh, Williams certainly. was uh, an Jim absolute disappointment for expectation. If you had, if you could go back and not play him, you would go back and not play him. One hundred percent, and a huge bust based on his opportunity. He had nine targets and a lot of them valuable end zone targets, deep targets. He just he had a bad game. Do we know what his injury was? He just got crushed on the arm. I mean, he basically. When, when the play happened and they punched the ball out, he got punched on the arm and then the helmet hit the same arm. And I think it was just... But then, and that's what I'm saying of he was... An first abrasion first of all, it was the very beginning of the game. And it the way that he went down, it was a, I don't know if Mike Williams was coming back in this game. So the fact that he did return and actually give you points, to me, it, this is just how you want to look at the game. But... The fact that it looked like Mike Williams could be knocked out and then he did return and give you some points while we don't know how limited he was by that arm injury because he the helmet hit into his arm was rough. So I, I would I would try to go glass half full. There's no way to do that. I, I playoffs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I understand that you thought maybe you lost him for the whole game, which also would have been bad, but uh, I, I don't know. Infinitely I, worse, as they say. Hmm. He no, had just about six points worse. He had nine targets, was on the field, and played poor. I mean, it, he yes, he he got hurt, but Eckler was hurt. You know, it's so good, good luck convincing a fantasy player who counted on Mike Williams that the glasses have right. full this morning. Foot Clan Friday. We are giving away a signed Stefan Diggs. Mini helmet today from pristineauction.com, and the winner is. Wow, this is the uh, this is the full name. <laughs> Live forever as cardboard from our Patreon account. Well, no, no, it's, it's a J. It's a J. Grizz shout out. Congratulations. the The full name is in fact Live Forever as Cardboard. Switch today. So this is J. Grizz trying to convince people to turn into cardboard themselves. Congratulations on your Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet. Go to pristineauction.com. Use code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Uh, Taylor Heineke has tested positive for COVID-19. We also, we should have in the news here today that Case Keenum has tested positive for COVID-19. So both are 
backups already. Right. Both are going to miss the game. And you're going to have Nick Mullins starting at quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. And you're going to have Garrett Gilbert. Yes. Now, what's pretty impressive, um, like who is I, not currently a Washington football team player, they're signing him today. Right. I, Nick, if you have Nick Mullins as your third string quarterback, honestly, that seems like an absolute best case scenario. He, he has actual starter uh, experience in the past. Meanwhile, I didn't realize that the guy who did the voice for uh, Iago <laughs> is going to come and, and be a quarterback. Yes, Gilbert Godfrey is the starter for Washington this week. Blow 42! <laughs> That's not, yeah. yeah, I mean... I, look, you got to go for it. I feel like people can do that one better than that. Can you? Sure. Yeah. Hit me. No, I can't. Oh. I just... People. Mm, I see. Just um, tossing... Jason obviously can't, otherwise he would have jumped in. That is correct. Uh, you've tried Gilbert Godfrey before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no confidence. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I have really tried it. But the, the reality Jafar! is you don't uh, – that's, that's better than all yeah, the other ones. You just don't want to hear it. It's not soothing. Uh, and nor is it really what's happening. But Garrett Gilbert has started one game for Dallas. It's a horrible mess. I mean, you have to downgrade your expectations for Antonio Gibson – the entire offense, because first downs are going to be, like... Impossible? Not happening. I mean, uh, you have Terry McLaurin limited, concussion, The, the ball starts under the center. The, 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 we're yep. going to give some 101 oh, here. Okay. Right. So the ball starts under the center. Now, this center who's standing above the ball is going to be a fifth-string guy basically off the street who is a plus-size model. <laughs> That's not a joke. Not, that not, is He's a big and tall model, not a plus size model. Okay. Well, he's a he's, he's a, I'm, I'm just uh, No, no. Look, in my defense, I have seen it literally reported as a as a plus size model. That's that is I've read and, that. That's and not on to be fair to him. He's a handsome gent. Oh, for sure. He's a model. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, I mean looks good. Yeah, Kurt Warner was working in the in the local supermarket while he waited for a job. This yeah. guy's doing modeling work. Yeah, and he's going to snap it to another player who doesn't know the playbook and is coming off the street. Right right across from them is Fletcher Cox. This is not going to go well. The closest thing this is to is the Kendall Hinton start last year. Yes. Yeah. Where and and that didn't go po well. And possibly worse. Like at least Kendall Hinton's like an athletic guy who could try to, to do something. This Unfortunately, this is the end of this the season sucks. for Washington. Yeah, they I were, mean, this is—they're they, not—they don't have a chance at the division after this week because probably, they're not going to win yeah. this game. They also win, and um, suddenly the suspense is gone. Yeah, and the Eagles' defense is a phenomenal start. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and they weren't necessarily on the radar to start the week compared to some other teams. Josh Allen ready to go for Week 15. DK Metcalf. I want to bring this one up because he's been missing practice every single week. This is happening constantly, but the back has never been listed as an injury. It's always been the foot. They've been managing his reps. He misses every single week on Thursday, and he plays. But he, D. Eskridge, Freddie Swain, and then now, obviously, Tyler Lockett yes. is the big news, went on the COVID list. What did they do at practice yesterday? Uh, I did see video of that. Like They wore masks and ran sprints. Well, I'm saying like just you were throwing to Gerald Everett? I mean, if all your, all your wide receivers were not at practice. Gerald Everett is low-key interesting. Oh, so necessary. Such a must-win for them, too. So I expect Metcalf to be out there, but there is some doubt out there in the community as to his availability in this game, which without Tyler Lockett, you would think, is a very high upside game for, for DK. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got non-COVID illnesses. Those still exist. David Montgomery, Cole Komet, missed practice due to them. And then, my goodness, we've got some in or out to play. Leonard Fournette didn't practice Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, um, there were some rumors that uh, Ronald Jones was not spotted at practice yesterday either, but he was not listed on the um, on the injury report. So this is something certainly to monitor. Right? If you miss Wednesday and Thursday for the first time, you know, all year, I think Leonard Fournette is a scary start. I mean, he could be out. Pay attention to Friday practice reports, and we'll have the Injury Blitz podcast as well later this afternoon from our expert, Matthew Betts. Elijah Mitchell didn't practice on Thursday, didn't practice on Wednesday. Ankle, or sorry, it's uh, it's not the ankle, is it? 
Uh, it was a knee and a concussion, I believe. So he is almost certainly not playing. I, I mean, I, I, I don't even view that as an option. Jalen Hurts is 50-50 to play. He's been taking reps. I think he will start this game. I don't know how to project their offensive weapons because they've been so – here's the way I look at this one is they've been so committed to the running game, right? They've they've completely flipped. So the, the passing opportunities have gone down, and then you combine that with game script where Garrett Gilbert is on the other side. So it's like how – you know, with your Dallas Goddard and your Devontae Smith, yeah. how much confidence can you really have that those guys are going to have opportunities? Like the They obviously have to take a lead, but – They do, but – I can't imagine the Philadelphia Eagles are throwing out their their high risk, high reward plays. Like they can win this game ten to zero. I agree, and and a a very comfortable ten to zero <laughs> with no fear. That's that what that, I mean. Like yeah. it, it can, they can be up seven points in the fourth quarter, and so it's like, yeah, whatever, man, we'll win. We do have an update that Miles Gaskin and Salvin Ahmed will be at Dolphins practice today. Okay. Oh. So that seems like a good sign that Miles Gaskin will get back into the lineup, does yeah. it not? It yeah, does. He, he was the first one uh, added to the COVID list of the whole running back room, so uh, he timeline wise would be the the first one back if um, you know he's testing negative. It and he's really a play. I was gonna say it doesn't really seem like you should be back at practice if you're not gonna play, and the Jets are. Awful, so Miles sneaky. Get, yeah, I mean, that, he's in. that's a great start. Uh, we have news on Hollywood Brown not practicing. That is something to pay attention to. Terry McLaurin limited he's with the concussion. again? What is going on with the Ravens, man? Have you seen their practice They're field? All... It's hay. I mean, oh, like, is that what's happening? <laughs> you should see how bad their practice field looks. That's I'd, a hay fever joke? It, it, yeah, it literally looks like they are. they're playing on dead grass. Oh, this is real. This is real. Oh, I thought you were just making a joke. It is a joke because that's not where the illness is coming from. But if, the if only they had millions of dollars to <laughs> yeah. treat their grass. What, what if you found out that this whole year, all these Lamar illnesses, <laughs> it's all allergies. It's just allergies, it's man. Just, <laughs> which I don't blame them. Kill them a certain. I couldn't play on like, a field of hay. Like this is, we uh, we played some flag football. Peel back the curtain, Mike. Yeah, we played some flag football, and they put us on to uh, – some very questionable yeah, they're, playing surface. They're practicing <laughs> on the field we used to play on. And, and I w the next multiple days, I would be annihilated because <laughs> of all the dirt and stuff that I had to inhale. Yeah, yeah, I remember those days. Uh, Carlos Hyde officially out. All indications are that James Robinson is going to get starter work in this game. And Yeah, um, uh, Bevel, interim coach Bevel came out and said, James Robinson is our starter and he will be used accordingly. He is literally a breath of fresh air in that. Did you see the – I, I mean, shared it in the Slack. I don't know if you saw it, though, the video clip of – Oh, I did. The re a reporter said es – essentially it was just like a leading question of, hey, I think you have a, a pretty decent chance of finishing with a better record than, than uh, Coach Urban Meyer did. And he, he just laughs. He just sits there, <laughs> sits there, and then just kind of laughs. He's like, hey. Not going to deal with that yeah. one. But you could tell <laughs> the look on his face. I don't think there is anyone in that building sad that Urban Meyer is gone. Now, I don't think there's like one relationship he made where it's like, oh, no, this is terrible news. Yeah, and it, he also – he basically left the facility. That was what I was going to say. before, didn't tell anybody, is, never showed up again. This will be probably the last chance we have to take some pot shots here at, uh, at Urban Meyer. But, yeah, the reports came out that he just – he left the facility, didn't tell anybody what had happened – all the assistant coaches are like, we have to game plan. They're looking for their head for the coach. Weekend and their head coach is gone and didn't tell anybody what happened. He just left. What that a, guy, what a, what that a man. That sucks, man. And James Robinson looked up from his prayer. <laughs> and Urban Meyer was nowhere to I be mean, seen. Like, have some dignity as a oh. man. No, no such thing there. Goodness. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app. Check out the breaking alerts channel. We're jumping back into the fantasy forecast. Eight more games to talk about. Jason gets to spin the wheel of shame today. Yay. I can't wait. <clears throat> but first, we want to thank today's sponsors. Simply Safe. They've helped this show. Uh, they've helped support the show for quite a while. If you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, now is the time 
because our friends at Simply Safe are giving fantasy footballers listeners early access to their holiday deals. What does that mean? 40% off their award-winning home security. We know Brooks would turn down any discounts, but we know you of course. Have, we know that the listeners like them more than Brooks does. Um we've had Simply Safe for we're almost 5 years in this studio. They've been a partner of ours. Um we've had them here forever and and it's always, you know, we've got the we've had the experience of time, right? Like we've been with them for a long period of time mm -hmm. and everything stayed reliable, everything stayed up. Um they were named the best home security system of 2021. In fact, and uh, you can take advantage of the holiday deals. Get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers for 40% off your entire system. And fellas, engagement season, it is here. And that's why we want to thank our sponsor, Manly Bands. You, you, you spend all this time, all this care, picking out a, a ring for your partner, for your spouse, and then when it comes to your band, you're just like, I'll take that one. It doesn't have to be that way. You can care, and you can have a super awesome ring. Imagine, instead of just pointing at a ring and going, I'll take that one, you pick out a ring that is made out of meteorite, oh. carbon fiber, Damascus steel, wood, antler. How about a dinosaur bone wedding ring? You can get that done with our friends at Manly Bands. To get started, you go to manlybands.com slash footballers. If you don't know your size, you can get the, the ring sizer. It includes 26 plastic rings, and then you figure out what you need. Look through their website. I, I have a Manly Band. It's like it's this, it's black. It's got this cool design. And then when you hit it with a black light, boom. Little little hidden hidden gem from me. This thing glows, my friends. It They have very, very cool rings. So whether it's your first band or an upgrade, go to manlybands.com slash footballers use the promo code footballers to get 21 percent off that's 21 percent off at manlybands.com slash footballers or use promo code footballers fantasy forecast please remember there are two saturday games this week we and covered them yesterday, the Raiders, Browns, Patriots, Colts. And it has never, ever, ever been as important to get those players out of your flex. Right. Uh, it seems, you know, stupid, but if you have those guys going Saturday, get them in your running back, wide receiver, or even tight end slot if you're rolling two tight ends, because you can wake up Sunday morning this week and find out you're missing a, a player. The NFL has issued a memo with regards to COVID-19 protocols. Yes. And that came through yesterday that they're making some adjustments to the way that asymptomatic, uh, what I assume are no spread probability players are treated when it comes to returning to the team. Yes, they've, they've shortened the timeline for when you can test negative. They've also included some things of uh, thresholds that I'm not a doctor. I don't completely understand. But the viral load, related. yeah. Essentially, all you need to know is if if it is a, if it is a vaccinated player and they are asymptomatic, there is a chance that they can get on the field f sooner than they have been with the previous protocols. Yeah, it was kind of if you were testing positive early in the week, you're pretty much going to miss that that week. Correct. That might not happen now, although they are not retroactively applying those new protocols to players that were already put on the list early in the week, at least yeah. from the reports we have. So. I don't know what that, you know, it doesn't mean suddenly Odell Beckham's going to be in the game. Uh, Panthers, Bills, Cardinals, Lions, Jets, Dolphins, Cowboys, Giants, and the football team Eagles game also covered yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, you read those protocols, right? You read the entire I the did. write up? It was not fun because it's all <laughs> legalese nonsense. But mixed with medical. Yes, mixed with medical. Mm. Um, yeah, but uh, I think you guys explained it pretty well. Maybe we can. Uh, Get you to review all of the our internal health insurance documentation year to oh, year. I'd love to, I'd love to do it. Yeah, uh, the I have read it, <laughs> and that's that's it. Uh, signed off. <laughs> what did it say? It said you're good to <laughs> sign. <laughs> just, just look. I told you I read it. Sign it. <laughs> oh man, um, the Tennessee Titans nine and four taking on the six six and one Pittsburgh Steelers. In Pittsburgh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Tennessee minus one. The over-under is 43. Am I the only one that was surprised at the line? 
Uh, no, I, I was as well. I thought Pittsburgh would be favored at home in this game where, you know, Tennessee is without uh, A.J. Brown. They're without Derrick Henry. Um, they've had some ups and downs since, you know, those guys went out. But here they are favorites on the road. The over-under is just 43. Um, it has come up a little bit over the week. I mean, this is not a good, this is not a good recipe for total points. We saw both sides of the coin with Pittsburgh last week, which is like the first time we've actually seen it where – they got some things together on offense. Was that a result of playing catch up and playing against prevent and playing against big play defense? I don't know. The first half was disgusting. I mean, yes, big Ben was under fire. He was taking brutal sacks. His mobility is so bad right now. That oh, you can't move inside. How bad is it? <laughs> you can't move inside the pocket. So you can't he can't evade left and evade right and get a throw off is he what's just, happening. He leans now. He just leans to the right or to the left. Yeah, That's his and evasive gets, maneuver. I think it's pancaked. Uh so Mike, you are a fan of Deonta Foreman in this. I one. am indeed. The the Steelers, he's my start of the week. The Steelers have just completely collapsed against fantasy running backs over the last six weeks, allowing nearly thirty points a game to the position. And and it's clear that it, a couple of weeks ago you didn't know who they brought Peterson in. You have McNichols. It's it's very clear now. It's Deontay Foreman is their Derrick Henry replacement for the time being. When it comes to Julio Jones, who did play forty five percent of snaps, had six targets. You know how how low down the totem pole is he when it comes to start sit choices this week? Are you? playing Julio Jones in this matchup against Pittsburgh over Michael Pittman against New England? No, I would go Pittman just because of the juice we've seen this year. I think a good name to compare him to would be Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, the the target volume against Arizona, but a, obviously a, a bad offense versus here, Julio being the leader of this offense. Which way do you guys lean on that? I'm pretty afraid of Julio, I think. You're in <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, you should be afraid of a Lions wide receiver. I am terrified. It's <laughs> double afraid. There's no non-fear situation here. Mike, who do you go with? I think I would. That was my answer. Mike, who do you go with? I would take the chance and I would play Julio. It was, I, it was his first game back off of the hamstring injury. It's always his first game back I, off I, the I, hamstring Well, no, injury. this yeah. is now his second. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you don't I, think he had one during the week? I get what you're saying, but I would – I'd take the chance on Julio. Yeah, the, it, I, it, let me throw out a name for you because you probably just grabbed him off of the wire. Would you play K.J. Osborne of the Vikings against the Chicago Bears? Yes. And now it's uh, Monday night. Sure. So you do have other factors uh, at play as in – The earlier your, you can your, play them, the better. Does your Monday night player get knocked out by COVID? Look, only one of those players gives me the chance to sign D.D. Westbrook as the backup. Oh, that's a good point. So that's the one I always go with. Uh, Deontay Johnson, you always play him. Najee Harris, of course. Yep. Chase Claypool is my start of the week. I think there is a touchdown in his near future. <laughs> it's absurd. And then Pat Fryermuth, you are you are playing with fire with the fryer. Yeah, <laughs> it's Pat Fryermuth this week, and it's <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, he has been touchdown dependent. Yeah, end, yeah, yeah, end of game touchdown dependent. Yeah, and and the Titans are a well-coached team. I don't think they've got the most talent on defense, but they've had a pretty good defense. They haven't done – they haven't given up a lot to the tight end position, so I would be hesitant to play Pat this week. Are you taking uh, the Muth then, or would you chase the volume that Gerald Everett could be seeing against the Rams? Tyler Lockett is essentially for sure out, and then you got all these other guys banked up. Yeah, if it's a full PPR, I would I would go Gerald Everett. Okay. If, uh, if you're playing in a standard league, then the touchdown is going to be Fryermuth. And if you're playing against Travis Kelsey, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry for your loss. <laughs> that, like, oh, oh, we didn't bring that up. There are a lot of people out yeah. there that faced him. And you want to talk about – he may have heard us on the show. I think this is probably the case. Yeah. He heard us mention that he's on the cusp of not ending the year as the number one tight end. And I think he put that to bed last night. Yeah, I mean, he can be mediocre the rest of the way, and he'll he'll probably finish number one after what he did. If you had him, your odds of winning at this point have got to be 80-plus percent. Yeah, they've got to be very high. All right, uh, guys, we have to do this. This is uh, one of the matchups. Houston, 2-11, and 11, taking on the 2-11 and 11 Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, I'm ready. 
The uh, the over under is thirty nine point five. Jacksonville are their favorite on the DK Sportsbook minus three and a half. They're favored by more than a field goal. They uh, they began the week favored. So good for you, Jacksonville. I did. Uh, well, we'll talk about it later. But I, I had some decisions to make in this game, and um, the firing of Urban Meyer swayed one of them. This is a rematch from Week One. Houston won. Their first game of the year, 37-21. And this was the best game of Trevor Lawrence's career was his first game. And yes. it was, you know, he's 332-3. and three. Since then, it's not been pretty. You know, and I don't know how much, you know, the coach departing is going to make a difference. But Trevor Lawrence has thrown one touchdown pass in the last six weeks. So when you are toying about in your mind with Marvin Jones or Laquan Treadwell – or even James Robinson in the passing game, you have to factor in the fact that they have really done nothing in the passing game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this is good news for Marvin Jones, and I could see him stepping up, having a good game, but I, these are still two human beings that have been trying to get it done on the field and have not been able to. The matchup is nice, but I would personally want to wait. I, I can't imagine in the playoffs really relying on the Jacksonville passing attack. What's crazy about this week is with all the COVID related news, a lot of these lower tier players are really relevant. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you had Tyler Lockett, you know, I have Odell Beckham. Like, I'm playing Marvin Jones. I made that decision to play him over Daryl Williams last night. Yeah, that that level I would agree with. And, and so you do have these flex choices now with these Amon Ross St. Browns that are coming to light because you don't you're pivoting away from players you thought you could count on. Marvin at least offers you touchdown upside compared to some other players, but it's it's a risk. Houston will do their best to accommodate. They are 31st against opposing wideouts. They give up 33.6 points on average to them. So if you try to distribute, okay, maybe Jacksonville can't do that, but they got 25. How is, you know, is it Marvin? Is it Laquan Treadwell? Right. Treadwell is much cheaper in DFS, mm -hmm. um, and he's been pretty relevant, but James Robinson is the storyline here in terms Absolutely. of difference maker for your fantasy team. Yeah, Houston's allowing the most rushing yards uh, in the NFL. So, yes, James Robinson is in. Carlos Hyde is out. Urban Meyer is out. So there's there's a lot of uh, workload security here for James Robinson. On the other side of the ball, Sexy Rexy Burkhead. Uh, it sounds like he is not going to play. It's and, crazy. They ruled him out. Yes. But then he returned to practice. What? Yes. He did. did. He returned to practice what? yesterday and practiced in a Wait limited... Wait a minute, so is he in or is he out? Well, he's I, marked as out on every platform, I, but he, he Yeah, did. I would imagine he's out. Uh, but, you know, practicing in a limited fashion can work around an injury. I just... that Yeah, that, that sounds a little bit strange. Yeah, Burkhead was marked out. And in that process, where I was going to is that uh, Coach Coley has said, David Johnson will be our guy. Like uh, Royce Freeman... Uh, last week after the Rex Burkhead injury, that turned into a whole bunch of targets. Eight targets. Like, do I don't know if people realize that? Eight targets, five or six for fifty-one through the air for Royce Freeman last week. Nineteen total opportunities on the day. But Cully has said David Johnson will be the guy. I think that is some um, some very cheap opportunity that could that literally could still be on your waiver wire right now. I think Rex Burkhead might be active, and, and in that case, I would avoid the backfield. This is – he was ruled out. They, they said that he this wasn't going to play early in the week, but he was limited in practice yesterday. I just – just be careful because this backfield is already non – you don't have confidence even if they say David Johnson's the guy. You just don't. He's been – they've just been so bad this year. Yeah. And uh, Jacksonville's defense isn't – you look at this matchup, 2-11, 2-11, and and their defense has been pretty darn good over the last six weeks. Mm-hmm. So I just think there's a bit of a trap there potentially. Um, I would go with a lot of other options at running back. I mean, is is David Johnson? I mean, I can give you some names, and 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 you can tell me at least okay. today. Um, are you playing him over any of the? Um, are you choosing a an eagle over David Johnson? Um, that's an interesting question. With just trying to project the game script, which can be disastrous at times but it's hard to imagine that the Eagles are not up and just trying to run out the clock so they can they can move on to next week I would play uh, yeah I'd, I'd play Miles over David Johnson what about Mike Davis who's been involved 
over David Johnson. I would, and this is all assuming that Rex Burkhead is out. Yes, I would play David Johnson. Jason has Brandon Cooks as his start of the week. Was eight for one hundred and one for the general last week, and uh, at least with one of those rare games where Houston is underdogs to the Jaguars. Maybe you maybe you have a high scoring affair like you did in week one, thirty seven twenty one with defenses struggling. Cincinnati, seven and six taking on the Denver Broncos. The DK Sportsbook line here, over under is forty four points, Denver minus two and a half. The pace in this game is going to be slow. Cincinnati mm-hmm. is thirtieth in neutral pace. Denver is twenty ninth. They both love running the football. We've seen games where Mixon's had twenty five plus opportunities. Last week, I believe Javante and Melvin combined for over forty carries. Somewhere around there. Yeah, I can add it up, but that sounds right. Uh, I think we are all not willing to take a chance with pass catchers on Denver. Is that fair? That is fair and accurate. I would not. I, I couldn't imagine relying on Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, or Noah Fant. They are out of my lineup. Out of out, you know, AJ Green is someone that it's oh not yes, a, yes, it's not even a a thought or a hard decision there. And if you're that easily behind AJ Green, we can move on. And an update, Andy. They had a combined thirty nine carries. So you are dumb. Oh, what a liar! <laughs> yeah, I, that's. It's almost like my Kelsey prediction. Look, Price is right rule says you're you're wrong. No, no, I I stand very corrected. <laughs> By the way, Trevor Lawrence did not win a Heisman. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, Joe Burrow. Anyone who would think that is a yeah. just a I mean, imagine thinking that this number prolific one pick. college quarterback got a franchise or a Heisman. All right, Joe Burrow. This is this is a player that I think is very difficult. Yeah. To, you know, he's been a top 12 quarterback for three straight weeks. So you have confidence there. But then Denver, they're a solid defense. They're at home. They're favored. The weapons, we know. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins playing great. Higgins is three straight games over 100 yards. But pace of play, you know that the, the total possessions in this game are not going to be as high as a normal game. So when you look at that, you're kind of saying, will Joe Burrow take advantage of X amount of drives? against Denver on the road. Are you trying to bench him this week? Burrow's a real question mark. I, I don't think you have to bench him. I would play him, you know, over other options, you know. Would, I, you, would you play Taysom Hill? I would play Taysom Hill. Okay. Because of the rushing upside. Even the, Big against, Ben? No, that's where I would go Burrow. I could see Big Ben having a fine game against Tennessee's secondary, but Burrow has looked really good. Um, he's someone that I believe will be a long-term franchise quarterback, a true, um, valuable fantasy asset as he progresses through his, his career. Um, this is just a tough matchup in the, in mile high, but five the, touchdowns over the last five weeks in the air for Joe Burrow. So that number hasn't been high two of those weeks supplemented with a rushing touchdown by mm-hmm. him. So, um, he does feel a little sketch this week. Yeah, it's a little sketch, but the weapons are good, right? You're not going to bench T. Higgins, are you? You're not going to bench Jamar Chase. No. Um, And I think both those guys should be able to get it done, which obviously will go back to Burrow. And then Joe Mixon took all of the accolades that he had received from (laughs) this show and others and uh, had a couple down weeks, but 20 opportunities in both of them. Don't you rely on me. Uh, 2.8 a carry against San Francisco or against the Chargers, 3.2 against San Francisco. Um. This game should be interesting, and we're not touching any other options. Atlanta at six and seven take on the seven and six San Francisco 49ers. 49ers are on a roll. They're also nine point home favorites, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over under is 46, one of the higher ones of the week, compared, at least better than several of these games. One of the higher ones of the week, and you combine that with they're favored by nine. That's a very nice implied team total for the 49ers 27 and a half points. Yep. So, Mike, you threw out Jimmy Garoppolo as a deeper start of the week this mm-hmm. week. Hold him up against Joe Burrow in the game before. I mean, the the matchup is – like, I'd go Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't blame Over you. Joe Burrow. I, I do not blame you. I think that one is very close. Uh, I think that the – if Elijah Mitchell is truly out, that gives a, it gives a boost to my confidence in playing Garoppolo over Burrow. 
What about Jeff Wilson? You know, I was going to bring him up earlier when you were yeah. talking about David Johnson or you're talking about, you know, maybe a Chuba Hubbard. Like, are you playing Jeff Wilson if Elijah's out over a Chuba? Yes, I would play him over Chuba. It <laughs> Chuba is just, it's been very disappointing for all of the uh, opportunities he's received and he's up against Buffalo. I just, yeah, give me Jeff. Jeff Wilson was a fantasy hero. Last, yes, he was. Last year for your team, Mike. Yes, he had two great games to close the year. Debo Samuel running back for the <laughs> – I mean, he really has been. Yeah. What, one one reception in, or fewer in how many games in a row? I mean, Four? Come on, Shani. Let's get him some – the running back stuff is great, but uh, we don't play in uh, point-per-carry leagues, my friend. Let's get some targets. Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver 12 since week nine. Redemption. Do you, do you like him in this game? <laughs> um, I do. Uh, Atlanta uh, is a, you know, I, I, Atlanta is just a bad defense. If you look at what they've been doing against fantasy wide receivers, they're giving up about 30 points a game, um, more than that on the season. And uh, yeah, I, I would, I would say that Ayuk, who has now become their wide receiver one, now that Debo is a, you know, a, a hybrid running back, um, the utilization has worked. He's He's been good, and the matchup is good. So, yeah, I, I would be happy to start Brandon Ayuk. George Kittle has been on fire. Two humongous games uh, in over the last two weeks. Probably and not going to outpace Kelsey this week. Probably not. But he may keep you closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he watched that game. And I'll bet he said challenge accepted. Amazingly, Atlanta is number one against tight ends over the last six weeks. So challenge. I don't know. Accepted. I don't have all their opponents in front of me, but um, George Kittle wasn't one of them. Cordero Patterson. He's in your lineup every week. He's one of the he's the only player that really moves the offense at all. What do you make of that report of the like limiting his touches? I read the article mm -hmm. after seeing the headline about right. managing his touches. And I would be, I was less concerned about it. Okay. I mean, last week they had the game put away, mm -hmm. and so he he didn't play. Uh, but I don't think they'll have this one put away. So I'm optimistic that they'll involve him in the passing game a little bit more than they did last week. Mike, you like Russell Gage in this matchup? Yeah, I just I, I think of uh, game script. Yeah, game script and the 49ers have been beatable over the last handful of games, and he just. What he, about Ayuk? Would you play Ayuk or Russell Gage? I would, I'd play Ayuk. It just both of their opportunities are solid this week, and but I think that Brandon Ayuk is a is a better player. So I'll go with the talent. Uh, Kyle Pitts. Oh gosh. Oh man. This this is where the decision. This is real. Of uh, it was uh, it was cute and fun, you know, making the decision throughout the season. And if you got it wrong, maybe it cost you. Maybe it didn't. If it costs you this week, that is the ultimate penalty for Kyle Pitts doing nothing. Andy, are, is there a chance you are pivoting away from Kyle Pitts this week? Like Dawson Knox, Dallas Goddard. That's the, Dawson's not a pivot. Dawson would be in over him. Okay. Yeah. But Dawson's not a pivot. A pivot would be Zach Mike, Ertz, Mike Gerald Everett, maybe Mike Gesicki. Okay. So Gesicki. With let's say Waddle is really out because that's not a that's not a confirmed Waddle's just on the COVID list. I think the right decision for other people, not not me, <laughs> is Mike is Mike Gesicki. But I am going down with the ship. Okay, you're and maybe that's overstating it. I mean, he 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 he's been you know five for sixty one last week. The, the problem is touchdowns. He's got one on the year. You yeah, got, you got the violin out, and you're saying it's been an honor to play with you, gentlemen. If you are in the playoffs, and I've said this, and I think Gasicki fits the mold, so I'm fine playing him over that. Okay. You play – like, I'm in the playoffs, and I'm looking at these matchups, and I'm saying, I need all of my players to have the ability to do something special and make up for a, a bust from another player. If I put in a – Gerald Everett, I'm not getting that upset. I'm not getting week seven Kyle Pitts, seven for 163. There's no chance of that with those players. So it's just philosophical. If you need – what wasn't there some player you were like, if you need four points yeah, Nick from a tight end, <laughs> like it's just not how I play fantasy. 
I, I play fantasy to win, and I need the potential to counterpunch a big game from somebody else. And there are only a handful of tight ends that can do that. So I am going to play one that has put up 163 or 119 yards. And that was that was a long time ago. I, I know. I would agree with what you're saying philosophically. And the the thing about Kyle Pitts is there's kind of a clear cutoff for me. It's after Zach Ertz and Mike Gesicki. Like I would without question start those guys. You would start Zach Ertz over over Kyle. Oh, Pitts. without a doubt against Detroit with no Hopkins, Zach Ertz. We've already seen he has big play potential. Um, this is a tough matchup for tight ends in general, and Pitts hasn't shown us anything of special in a long, long time. So, yeah, I mean, I I would put Zach Ertz, Mike Gesicki ahead of him. Um, but that's basically where then Kyle Pitts slots in there because the guys behind that, you know, your Hunter Henrys and Ricky Seals Jones and Gerald Everett's, they're they're they don't have a high ceiling. They just have somewhat you know of, of a raised floor it's tough it's tough it really is I mean you hit you've had games without Hopkins where Zach Ertz was invisible it, but again those without Hopkins games were the same games without Kyler Murray like they missed the same three pack that doesn't mean Zach Ertz is going to deliver it doesn't mean that he's going to deliver but I don't think it's fair to use the those three games when he had a backup quarterback as the benchmark for what he does with Kyler because the offense is just better Right. Yeah, the offense is better. It's a good matchup with Detroit. Uh, but if both players play and both players don't score a touchdown, Kyle Pitts will have a better game. I will take that bet. <laughs> Water bet. We so are I, exclusively a tight end betting. So I, I just want to understand this bet. Yes. The the. <laughs> So, for this bet to go off, <laughs> both tight ends cannot score a touchdown. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> because if just one no, of them... No, they, they, they can match. It, okay, okay. As okay, long okay. as the touchdown total is the same. Yes. Okay. But if someone scores two touchdowns... And one, it then doesn't, the, bet the bet's off. off. Okay. okay. It can be double zeros, double ones, double well, twos. Well, what about, what about this? We just take touchdowns out and we say receptions and yardage. That's it. The, uh, that would be a way easier way to do this, Jason. Yes, I don't, yeah, I don't no, like that. Okay, dude, they have <laughs> okay. to be even on touchdowns, of course. I was going to agree with that, but let's just make it the stupid way. All right. Um, all right. Uh, I think we've covered this game. Matt Ryan's not an option for you? Correct. All right. Uh, yeah, Mike no. Davis, desperation? Yes, desperation. They've been running the ball better. That's all. All right, Seattle, 5-8. and eight. The Rams, 9-4. and four. Games in Los Angeles, the Rams are five and a half point favorites. The over under is forty five points. That's another line I'm a little surprised at. That I think that's giving a little bit of credit to Seattle and what they did last week and maybe Russ getting back to form. I would have expected a nine and four Rams team that just came off a, a pretty important Monday night victory to have a a, a bigger I'm gonna a bigger guess line. that a lot of that line is due to the COVID IR. The Rams are one of the three teams That's fair. that are really struggling with a COVID outbreak, if you will. Um, they're going to be testing a I lot will. going forward, and they are a scary team for waking up and having your player um, pop positive. Like Matthew Stafford? Yeah, Stafford, Cup, Cup, Michelle. There are great fantasy options in this game, and you know it's just one of those that like the Cleveland game is another one and the Washington football team is another one but there's no players there that you're really relying on from those two so well, this Gibson, is the, but yeah I mean sure uh, but th this one you're excited about these options you're you're banking on them they got you here so I'm holding my breath with the Rams uh this week Stafford has been the quarterback four five and seven over the last three weeks Sonny Michelle's my start of the week I think he is going to um, continue to do what he's done, which is be a very efficient runner. They've they've established it. The Seahawks are 28th against the run in the last six weeks, 31st on the year. Cooper Cup is an auto start in Van Jefferson. You know, he, he's probably a play regardless of the status of Odell Beckham. He's stronger without him. Mm -hmm. um, Higby becomes interesting without Beckham because you haven't had a game like that this year where you've had no Robert Woods and no Odell Beckham and Higby just missed last week for a false positive COVID test, and the Seahawks struggle against tight ends. So I think he may be 
ignored this week, but he he might be a strong play. Yeah, he's right on that fringe of all the like because he can. I guess it's kind of what we were just talking about. Higby couldn't give you a really strong game. You've seen it in the past. We haven't seen it this year, but over the course of his career, you've seen him dominate uh, a handful of games. I'd or he could, or he could give you a point this week. I'd play him over ever. Okay. With if Beckham right. is not there, I do think there's a chance Beckham plays in this game. He's not been ruled out officially, and his test was very early in the week. So I think that there is a chance that he is a double negative and gets back in. Uh, but it might end up just like Keenan Allen last week. Do you play Van Jefferson either way? If yes. if Odell yeah, Beckham yeah, yeah. is there or not? Yep. Uh, Rashad Penny is going to be the guy behind uh, Russell Wilson. So do you play him over Devonta Freeman? No. Oh. I would. I'm I'm going to take the matchup. I. What if he what if Lamar good. is out? I mean, you'd still go with Freeman. Saw uh, you saw Latavius get the goal line. Wait, 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 wait. Go rewind. <laughs> this was Devonta Freeman, not Deonta Foreman. That is what I said. Oh no, definitely Penny. Okay, okay. I thought it was Foreman. <laughs> what I'm, about what about uh, Foreman? I would take Foreman. <laughs> okay. When you said Lamar, I'm like, what does he have <laughs> to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, uh, Just why, for the morale. Of why would I care about another game? You know, how oops. <laughs> Uh, we do have some breaking news, at least coming out on Twitter, that Michael Carter coming off IR will have, quote, a significant role on Sunday. Uh, okay. and that's straight from the head coach's mouth. We'll so see. Robert Sala. Uh, Tevin Coleman is also returning, though. So, Yeah, but Michael Carter is, go Jets go. is much better than Tevin Coleman. Dolphins D's been very good. Yep. And Zach Wilson been very bad. Uh, also true. We've begged him to throw the ball to Michael Carter, have we not? Yeah. Russell Wilson, what do you do? 20, uh, 20, fuss, uh, 20 plus fantasy points in three straight games, yeah. but no Tyler Lockett. If he doesn't have Lockett, I'm not, I'm not playing him. If it's been f real back end one numbers, like, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going dumpster diving on on the wire for a streamer if I have Russell Wilson. But just saying, if I have another strong option available, I'd prefer them. Yeah, I, I agree. The the twenty plus metric, like one of those weeks is twenty point seven. It's like, yes, it's true, but that's not a game you were happy with. And he hasn't looked great with DK Metcalf. While while I expect DK to have a good game, I agree. With lock it out, I'm I'm not playing uh Russ. Miles Gaskin is officially off the COVID list. And he's and, he in. and Salvat Ahmed. And they're both playing. Okay. Great uh play. DK Metcalf. Went five for ninety eight and two against the Rams in week five, including a touchdown against Ramsey. Now, he will be the focus of the defense, the secondary, if Lockett is not there. So, you know, it's a it's risky, but th this game, the way the game script's set up, he should have his targets. He should have his opportunities if he's out there. Yeah, I'm, that's I will go down with that ship. If D I'm not benching Metcalf. The Green Bay Packers at ten and three take on the eight and five Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Ravens are struggling on offense. Yes. Yeah, that's an understatement. Lamar, if he's active, can you trust him? That's the question. I feel like you have to. I mean, uh, sure, the Taysom Hill is always the one to go to because he was picked up off of waivers a couple weeks ago, but I doubt that the team that had Lamar was the one that picked him up. All right. It, probably just a hypothetical because you, I can't imagine you have both these guys, but Lamar or Russell Wilson? I would definitely go Lamar. I, okay. I'm going to stay away from Lamar. I mean, you, you guys brought up the, the lack of confidence, or at least Mike did, with, with Jalen Hurts' ankle. Yeah. And Baltimore, what what's the streak of points scored for this team? Uh, they did put With up, Lamar behind center. <laughs> like they, they hit 22 last week, but Lamar missed essentially that entire game. 19-16, uh, 16-10. So they are, they're going up. I think this is a courage play for me. I think you have to have the courage to not play Lamar. You might probably won't have Hollywood out there. Yeah, and if you do, you've got a and Green Bay's a great defense. A Hollywood that's probably getting IVs on the sideline. Um, I think I think get him I would, some Zyrtec. I think I'm going to recommend a Lamar bench on my side of things, and maybe that'll Oof. be stupid. That's that's tough. I you know the Packers are such a machine. Yeah, I think I I think you're right. I'm looking at this, Lamar's had three basically bad games in a row now he's got a hurt ankle tough matchup Marquise Brown ill um 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about guys like Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, that's that's an option where someone would have to look at that. A Ben Roethlisberger, they've got a good matchup. Would you be willing to put the either one of those two guys in over an active Lamar Jackson in your fantasy playoffs? That's that is a courage test. Andy, are you a coward? <laughs> What were the two options? Big Ben and who? Big Ben and Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, uh, oh my gosh! Oh man! Yes, I'm a coward. So yes. you start. So you're starting Lamar. I. <sighs> yeah, I'll play Jimmy G. I'll play Jimmy G. Big Ben is. I'll play both. Yes, I'm. I have courage now. Yes, Lamar's behind the t both of them. <sighs> okay, I. I totally understand Lamar, that. L Lamar's looked terrible. He has looked terrible. He has not scored. He's not going to be able to run. He has not scored 20 points in fantasy for uh, in any of the last th three games. And so yes. I, I see what you're saying. Have courage. And then remember yes. it is Andy. It, uh, uh, yeah, that, I was going to say. I just want to confirm, yeah. confirm it's, it's at Andy Holloway. Oh yes, my god! On Twitter, I don't like you guys. Andy That's going to be a huge problem. <laughs> so bench Lamar. If my fantasy teams lose this weekend, and this happens. Oh man, that would that would be too much. But yes, it he is. Put it, I, <laughs> on YouTube, he put this. Uh, yes, up. it is at Andy Holloway um, on all socials. Oh boy. Oh boy, bench Lamar. That's what I said. Uh, uh, don't bench Aaron Rodgers. He's been. Oh no. He's been melting defenses. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna have the opportunity. Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson? Yeah, it's it's Rodgers. It's Rodgers. Honestly, you could say Aaron Rodgers or anybody. I mean, Kyler Murray. I'm not that anybody has that decision to make, but Aaron Rodgers has been nuclear, and the Ravens' defense is depleted. It's pooplier. The so Aaron Rodgers could absolutely be the the number one quarterback on the week. Yeah. Uh, do you go back to MVS? After last week's disappointing game. No, because Alan Lazard. Um, to me, when Alan Lazard is there, and, and he had a good game, I don't want to deal with the second option. It's uh, Devontae Adams. And now, he was there for the previous three games that MVS was played great in. Well, he was there for week 12. He did miss week 11. Um, I think both are in play. I don't know if I favor one or the other, but I do think that Green Bay is going to cover their implied uh, point total of 24 and a half. Yeah, you're right. Week and, 11 was the same week that MBS had his breakout. So yeah. I stand corrected there. Uh, it's, it's, they're both – it wouldn't shock me if, if one of them caught a touchdown. It wouldn't shock me if both of them caught a touchdown this week. Like, uh, MVS had a touchdown in his hands last week, and it just it got knocked out at the last second. So it's not like he wasn't being utilized, getting an opportunity to score. The world is worried for Aaron Jones. Mm -hmm. Are you? I am worried, but I am starting him. He's so explosive. It's an Eckler situation. Yeah, he, you know, last week, eight total touches, and he finished as a top 10 running back. Um, that's not how I want it to come. I would much rather him um, be up in the 15 to 20 uh, total opportunities, but his talent, um, his his ability to make plays, what he means for the offense, I, I'm i still starting Aaron Jones, but I see him now as a running back, too. What do you see A.J. Dillon at? Because that is the one area Baltimore is giving up 12 fantasy points to the running back position in the last six weeks. Yeah, they've been very stingy. So you, you talk about a player that if Aaron Jones is active, doesn't see as many third downs, are you playing A.J. Dillon as a flex? I am. Devontae Smith as a flex or A.J. Dillon? I think uh I Devontae think I'd, Smith. I think I would go AJ Dillon. If if this game goes the way that I think it will go, that means that it's going to be a, a lot of opportunities for AJ Dillon in the second half cuz he's that he's the guy they go to now to salt the game away. Devonta Freeman is a what this week? Running back low end RB2. Okay. Uh, the New Orleans Saints on Sunday night at six and seven take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ten and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Tampa Bay minus eleven. The over under is forty six and a half. Tampa Bay beat them thirty six twenty seven in Week Eight. Brady went three seventy five and four in that one. Brady, the front runner for the MVP this year. Yes, um, he's averaging three hundred twenty four passing yards and four touchdowns at home. 
at age 44. <laughs> he is absolutely the greatest of all time. The, the, you can't deny that. If he, if he starts a new dynasty in his 40s on a new franchise, if they go and win the, the championship, and you look at their schedule the rest of the way. I mean, they, they got the number one locked up. You they think? have the number one locked up uh, because they're going to have to either lose to the Saints, which they're 11 point favorites right now, lose to Carolina, who is just imploding the Jets or Carolina again. Uh, they, they're probably going to the championship weekend. Uh, yes. Oh, man. so you, you, you're I'm probably be really <laughs> sad when I'm knocked out this week. <laughs> they're probably going to win four more games, finish 14 and three, and he's got the MVP. Does the if Leonard Fournette doesn't play? Does that have any impact on how you see this game script going at all? Nope. But if he doesn't play, then I will play Ronald Jones despite the tough matchup. Evans, Godwin, Gronkowski all in your lineup. Yep. On the other side, it's um, it's Taysom Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a, uh, he'll be fine. Yes, he yep. will. And then Alvin Kamara. That is correct. And then, of course. Oh, yes. Super Mario. Mm. Even though Brooks isn't here today. Uh-huh. He, he just he really likes that drop. Yeah, it's fun. It's got a good good graphic. Uh, he's in, and then if you are desperately needing, like I said, four to five points from your tight end position, Nick Vanette, he's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sit down in the morning and you say, what take am I going to bring that they will not see coming? And then you get to Nick Vanette. Look, I'm a man of mystery. He starts at the bottom of the list and works yeah. his way up. Uh, was it like a Jeff Swaim or Vanette discussion for you on the No, it was morning? it was looking at the pass catchers for the Saints. Gross. Looking at the opportunity that Vanette has had recently, trending up, and then looking at the Buccaneers on the season twenty fourth against fantasy tight ends. In the last six weeks, twenty fifth. They've been consistently giving up points to that area. Don't they still have um Who's the other tight end that had a red zone? Jawan Johnson. Yeah, ja yeah but it, Nick Vanette's the guy. All right, Traquan unless, Smith. Unless somehow Adam Trauman. Adam Trauman is back. Then you play him with full confidence. Uh, can you throw Mike's socials up on yeah. there? Can you zoom in on him? Yeah, yeah let's go. I just, Adam Troutman. Uh, what, what week is this now? Uh, 15? 15. Okay. It's Adam Troutman time. That's Adam Troutman time. Uh, he's been designated to return. I don't know if he he's been activated. Won't, he probably won't play. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football. You've got your, your fantasy playoffs coming down to a Dalvin Cook Monday Night game. Chicago Bears are 4-9. and nine. Well, I assume you do. I mean, at this point, it's all assumptions that these players are playing in the game. Congratulations for everybody who had a player playing last night and yeah. got the points, and they're, like, banked mm -hmm. now. Uh, the Vikings... 12 of the 13 games this year have been one-score games. There are six-point road favorites against the Bears. The over-under is 44.5. It gives them 25 points. gives the Bears 19. You know, I don't know how complicated this game is for fantasy purposes. You know, Dalvin Cook, is, he's been outstanding. Mm -hmm. Last week was so impressive. Justin Jefferson leading the league in inside the 10 targets since, I think, week eight. Those guys are locked into your lineup. On the other side of the ball, you, you always play David Montgomery. So of the non-locked players, who are you looking at? Are you looking at a Kirk Cousins? Are you looking at Mooney or Osborne? Um, yeah, I mean, Kirk Cousins would be a fine play. It is dumb. It is narrative-y. I still do worry about you know his Pri history prime with primetime <laughs> games. Like I, 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 I looked at him as a start of the week, and, and I just couldn't do it on primetime. But... The matchup on paper makes sense. The Bears are 28th on the season, 27th um, in the last six weeks against quarterback. And, you know, I, I think Kirk Cousins has really been good this year. He's he's one of the uh, more pleasant surprises to me on the season. And K.J. Osborne is someone that I, I am happy to start compared to a lot of those, um, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown is a great, you know, option. So many targets. He's he's a rookie. He's breaking out and all of that. And I, I see how he could have a good game, but I don't know that he has the explosive upside on the Lions that KJ Osborne I'd play Osborne. Has with the uh with the Vikings. Yeah, Alan Robinson's out this week. COVID nineteen right. list. Darnell Mooney, uh are you going full moon there? Um I think Mr. so. Mr. Bread Puddin'? 
Um, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you've got a perfect matchup here. Um, the Minnesota Vikings over the last six weeks are the worst at guarding wide receiver. Also, on the season, they are dead last. They <laughs> Mooney or, or Osborne? Oh, Mooney. Okay. That makes sense. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Dead last over the last six weeks and the season. It they, should be a very fun closeout to the playoff week. Stay away, of, COVID. A lot of points. Are you rolling the dice in Justin Fields? I think he is a I I think he is a high upside streaming option this week, yes. Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson. He's, a, <laughs> he's another one. He was the quarterback ten last week. I'll play Lamar. Okay. Uh, uh, Michael? I think I'd play Fields. Justin Fields, what, two picks, two fumbles last week? Screen pass goes to the house. Yeah. He, he's a he's a lucky man. Yes. But one of them was also a perfect uh, uh, slant route, which mm. turns into yard after catch. But mm. it was just it was a perfect pass, and he's running. That's the difference. All right, starts it tool all the rankings on thefantasyfootballers dot com. Jason, <laughs> let's it's, go. It's time. Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. Well, Mike was victorious last week, and Jason was not. Not. <laughs> I was not victorious. I have, and granted, we we all we all did. This wasn't the difference maker, but I just wanted to point out to myself, I've taken the <laughs> I've taken the plunge on Kelsey twice, um, and they were his two worst <laughs> weeks. And then and then the fact that last night happened, it's like. Come on! I paid up for you twice, and you sucked both times. Yeah, we all had him. I, as I said, yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't have helped you. you no, could, I know. You I scored two hundred points. Yes, I. Th that's why I said that. So why are you bummed? I'm just. It's unfortunate that you pay up for someone when they stink, and then you go away from didn't them. You, and, just like you did with Josh Allen, two or three times. I did. did yeah. Didn't you tell us you did a mid show? Pivot yeah, it was a, yes, it was a negative pivot for me. Um, <laughs> That's what you get. And I did a morning show pivot, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, today? Yeah, today. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, well, let's spin the wheel, and then we'll share our lineups. Wheel of Shame. Spin the wheel! All right, so we got Fedora... The blue man, that was Jester me. Hat. Hunter hat. Oh, man. Please don't be that. Oh, no, it's that. It's fish face. It what says is fish face? Fish face. Um, well, oh, I, I am looking forward to this. I think that the world is okay. about to find out. Oh, my God. How is this going to work? Take off the glasses, work? buddy. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, no. Well, the uh, glasses may fit under. The <laughs> oh, can you get it? Can you get, get it, it on? on? Can we get it on? YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Oh, that's a snug fit. Oh, oh. can you breathe? <laughs> um, yes, but I don't know. I don't know how this will play for a podcast. Oh, it sounds, it sounds oh, great. It's, it sounds like you would. You're speaking underwater. <laughs> okay, well that's what it feels like. I'm breathing too. How, how is oh, this? this is the worst by ten miles. How There's is, never been anything this bad. How does it smell? It it smells like plastic, <laughs> like a dead fish. Oh man! Oh baby, can you see? I see nothing. <laughs> do you want Do you want uh, Al to share your lineup? Um, I, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I think I can remember it. Oh, can we get the zoom in here? Why don't we get the close up? Yeah, and also hit us with a profile real yeah, quick. Yeah, I need the profile picture. Jay, turn to the left. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! How did you find? Wow, uh, you look ridiculous. Uh, and when you uh, speak up and into the microphone, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I will do my best. <laughs> it sounds like you're in a bathroom. <laughs> All right, quarterback this week. Do we can we even transition to the lineups? Yeah, let's go. My quarterback uh, is Matthew Stafford at seven thousand. I'm going to play okay. him at home against Seattle. Matthew Stafford. I've got my start of the week, Dak Prescott. <laughs> All right. All right. And I uh, I tried to save some money here, but I liked the matchup. I'm going with the Miami Dolphins signal caller. I'm going with Tua. Okay, my start of the week. My running backs, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, both are potential pivots. 
Same here, brother. Okay, I, I have Chase Edmonds and Jeff Wilson. Chase Edmonds at fifty one hundred for Arizona, if he's active. Of course, Jeff Wilson for five thousand. If there's no Elijah, otherwise those are both going to get pivoted out. Uh, one of them to uh, a likely David Johnson. And I will uh, just jump in because I also have Chase Edmonds. Okay, the, the fifty one hundred with. I expect Connor to be out, and I do expect Edmonds to be activated. That matchup is delightful. And the other one is I have David Johnson for 4,900 as the pass catcher, but that was with the information that Rex Burkhead was out. So if he somehow becomes – I can't – Jason's fish face is looking I just, just want right to know if suffocating. Me. How are you doing? Fish face is fine. <laughs> All right, you have your running backs, Fish I'm Face. I'm glad you wore a, a blue shirt. It seems like he's just jumping out of the sea. Uh, Fish Face's running backs are <laughs> Najee Harris. Okay. Oh. I, I paid, up paid up for up. Najee, 7800 And James Robinson. Dang it. Uh, okay. James Robinson's 5, great. 5400 All right. 5400 <laughs> All right, my, my wide receivers are where I spent my money. You ready for this? Yeah. Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, and DK Metcalf. Oh, oh, brother. Cooper okay. Cup, Devontae Adams, DK Metcalf, 9,800, 6, That's where I spent this week. I'm going to jump in then because I also have Cooper Cup, uh, 9,000 Cooper <laughs> Cup. You got to come through at that price, my friend. Uh, then I have the PPR machine, Deontay Johnson at 7,500 sure. against the Tennessee Titans. And then to go with my Tua. I got Devontae Parker, 4300 The price has plummeted because of the injury, and he's taken on the Jets. Yeah, wow. I, I don't know how Devontae <laughs> Parker is not in, in everybody's lineup. He's in mine at 4300 I also have Cooper Cup, so now none of us have Cooper Cup. Wow. Um, and then my other wide receiver is Gabriel Davis um, at 3700 Okay. All right. Well, uh, here are my bargains. <laughs> Uh, this is the worst. I mean, they, I'm so happy I won uh, or finished second. My tight end flex and defense are frightening because I oh, spent up. Let's get it. Uh, Jeff Swain for 3000 Tennessee taking on Pittsburgh. Swain uh, had a pretty decent week last week. Laquan Treadwell is only 3300 Oh, man. He's my flex. I'm okay. going back to the well against Houston. And uh, I have the Ravens defense against Green Bay, and that is doing. What are you doing? I had, Whoa! What? It was a process to stuff in some of these high high priced wide receivers. Um, it could be to my demise. We'll see. All right, I will jump in here because certainly, what could possibly go wrong with a Dolphins super stack? Oh yeah! So, <laughs> along with Parker and Tua. I'm getting Mike Kosicki in there for 5000 My flex is James Robinson at 5400 I can't believe that all three of us don't have that. Uh, and then I have the Buffalo Bills at home against the Carolina Panthers for 3100 Well, Mike, you and Fish Face have a lot in common. <laughs> well, not a lot. <laughs> um, I have uh, the Bills defense. I have Mike Gesicki at tight end. Okay. And my flex is Deonta Foreman, your start of the week. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> so stupid. this is the best one ever. This mask is hideous. <laughs> Unbelievable fish face. So, you, so you're telling me like someone would go around all night with that thing on? You could, you could not <laughs> walk with this on. You, there is a little peephole you, here. You got to talk into the microphone. You, there is a little peephole here, right? <laughs> that I'm talking out of. You, it's like, it's like trying to walk around where you can only look through a straw. It's not <laughs> happening. All right, download the draft. Well, you look great. App. Right now, use the code BALLERS this week. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings, oh, the he's... official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. This face is getting a little too sensual. Was he giving himself a rub <laughs> Yes. We need to shut this down. Please shut it down. Sunday Live, one hour before kickoff. Mike will be with you. Playoffs on the line. Oh. Yes. Look at, look at Fish Face dancing. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.